Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to my channel. This is Nina, Nina Baysmore. So glad that you're here. I hope you've subscribed. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Make sure that you click on the notifications button so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. I also want to encourage you to read the description box. I have more information in the description box as well as my email address and just some other information that you might find helpful. I'll also link the other medical billing and coding video that I uploaded some time ago. I think it'll give you some information as well. It was more uh, geared towards those who are looking to start their own medical billing and coding business. So I'll have that linked in the description box. This video, as you know, is entitled The Truth about medical billing and coding. So I also want you to know that if you're interested in the written notes for this video, send me an email. When you send me an email, I'll send you a link to the written notes that go along with this video. That said, I just want to uh, cause you to think about something. Many of us of a certain age, we experienced our first encounter probably with the healthcare system during our mother's prenatal visits. So when you think about it, that means that the healthcare system has been a part of your life since before you were born. In fact, the very first per person who was touching you was probably a healthcare professional. That said, the average person most likely has not considered this giant system that we call healthcare. However, healthcare is a mega system. It has systems within its structure that affect everyone to some degree. You have the clinical side to healthcare and the administrative side. We're all familiar with the trillion dollar pharmaceutical industry. You have dur durable medical equipment, the medical supply side, natural health care, which is my preference and my specialty. It's finally becoming more mainstream. You also have specialties that deal with the human body from the top to the bottom, from the inside out. There's probably some specialty. There are so many modalities and other details of clinical health care that administrative professionals are needed to manage the paperwork, the billing, the coding, the reimbursement. There's so much more involved in managing this complex system, but I will stay on topic because there's so much that's available. Even if you decide to go on the side of uh, auditing patient charts, that's the fraud and abuse side, so much to consider. But first you just need to acquire the training and the skills. So medical billing, and coding is the process of correctly preparing and submitting healthcare invoices for payment of services rendered. This means that the medical notes for the dates and the services billed must be coded accurately. So what you're doing as a medical coder is you're taking written words, the notes of the doctor, the notes of the physician, and you're converting them into acceptable codes so that these services rendered by the physician, the healthcare professional, can be considered for payment. There are uh, codes that are used for the procedures, the services, as well as the diagnoses. And so you have to have experience, knowledge in coding both sides. This process of converting words into alphanumeric codes requires knowledge of the anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, and documentation protocol of services rendered by a healthcare provider. There are books, of course, and there are online reference materials available to assist you, but another requirement is experience in submitting billing forms to different types of insurance carriers. Even though it may sound a little difficult if you're new to this, it can be a very exciting and rewarding challenge. So how do you get started? If you don't already have a background in healthcare, the first thing you want to do is you want to get acquainted with human anatomy and physiology. And if you're able to manage it, you want to study medical terminology and diseases at the same time. At the same time, If you do it at the same time, it's going to help to get you ready for your new career faster. But going at your own pace is going to keep you more focused and uh, eliminate some stress that might be involved if you're trying to do too much too soon. So you decide what's best for you. Just getting the studies in is going to be what is most important. If you prefer to learn on your own schedule, then you can search for some online courses. You can also order uh, reference books online. But if a classroom setting fits your personality and your schedule more, then just check with some community colleges in your area uh, for training. Once you have successfully completed your studies and you're ready to get started, 
what you need to do is now you're going to have to make some decisions because as I've said, there's so many opportunities within this mega healthcare system. And what you're going to try to do is narrow down what is going to fit your uh, best interest most. Because again, you want to eliminate stress as much as possible. And this can be, it's a very detail oriented time management uh, uh, demanding uh, type of uh, career. So you want to make sure that you're doing something that you enjoy, because I believe that if you enjoy something, uh, you're going to be able to uh, have better success. So even though there are many opportunities for this high demand career, just think about it. Do you prefer to use your skills as an employee? Are you going to be an independent contractor? Are you going to be a business owner, as I shared in my other video? Are you going to be a consultant, which generally is going to require more experience than you will have just starting out? Are you going to do this part-time or full-time? Do you have a specialty preference? Are you more interested in coding? Are you more interested in billing? Are you more interested in outpatient or inpatient services? So the truth is everyone is going to have their own interests and you just have to determine after your studies, you'll get more of a feel for what you're more uh, geared toward. Once you know that, then you're going to need to have a plan so that you can get into this field, get into this system, and start using the skills and the education that you have. Knowing this will also help you to determine what type of credentials, certifications you'll need. Depending on what you plan to do, you may want more than one type of specialty certification. So think about all of this because you're investing time and you're investing money. But those credentials, the certifications are important and you need to know which you need for what your plans are. Moving on, the truth is, even though coding and billing can be learned by the average person, if you don't already have a healthcare background, it does take some time to get acclimated to this system. Knowing this is going to help you to determine the feasibility of seeking to venture out on your own versus employment. And employment will offer you experience as well as more education. So for example, employment will allow you to gain experience as well as new skills. And when you're working in an environment with other professionals, it will allow you to network for future connections. Your employer might also require and probably pay for you to attend workshops, conferences, seminars, whatever is needed for continuing education. This is going to help you to save money so that you can have uh, money saved up for your future endeavors. And remember, there's more to medical billing and coding than most programs teach. So you're going to need to be familiar with guidelines, protocol, rules, regulations, especially as it relates to Medicare. You'll need to understand HIPAA, the, the HIPAA regulations, as well as managed care organization guidelines. The information is available. It's available, but you'll have to uh, have the time so that you're able to read and study and research and really keep current on what's going on in the field that you're in. So the more you know, the more of an asset you're going to be to your employer or your clients. And this is going to allow you this knowledge that you glean from continuing education. It's going to give you an advantage over the competition. And we all know that we want to offer as much as we're able to, if we're especially in the business model, we want to be able to offer as many services as possible. So if you, if you do decide to go the employment route, employment agencies can also be a resource to help you get started. You may not earn as much money as you would if you were seeking and, and um, securing employment on your own, but it's a good possibility that it will allow you to start working sooner. I don't want this video to be too long, so I hope that you will reach out to me, send me an email. Uh, you can even leave a comment here and ask me to uh, send you the link to the written notes that go along with this video. So I'm going to move along, as I said, a little faster so that we just don't have uh, too long of a video. The other thing I want to suggest is that um, along with evaluating your skills and your abilities in other areas, if you're going to become a business owner, an independent contractor, an employee, whatever it is, you're going to need marketing skills. You're going to need time management skills. You're going to need to know how to really articulate to prospective employers and or clients the skills, the knowledge, 
the expertise that you have that will be an asset to their practice, a, an asset to whatever it is that they're doing. And knowing this about yourself and being comfortable with it is going to allow you to present it in a way that those that you're seeking to work for or provide services for will feel comfortable with making the selection to bring you on board to hire you or your company. Finally, I just want to say there are so many scenarios as it relates to medical billing and coding. I've briefly offered you a few suggestions to consider based on your plans and your goals, but I think that you can be creative and design a working arrangement that is tailored to your personality and your lifestyle. In other words, as you become proficient in assessing, reviewing, strategizing, implementing, and following through in this profession, you'll instinctively know what is needed to efficiently streamline the process that is uh, involved in medical billing and coding, and you will be an asset. So let's briefly discuss how important it is for medical billers and coders to understand the medical claims process to reduce the number of rejected and unpaid, unpaid forgive me, charges. The medical claims process is a series of checklists that every claim must pass through before the insurance provider approves payment and it varies according to healthcare payment plans. Staying current again with the changes and the updates are going to help to prevent the need for resubmitting claims. So that is not just for your coding. You know that you have to stay current as it relates to codes every year. There are additions and deletions as it relates to uh, the codes that are being used, but also payers also have updates for you and they're going to provide them, but you're going to have to take the time to read them and really be current. Otherwise, you're going to possibly run into quite a few rejected um, claims. That means once you are making the time to do what you're doing in your schedule, make sure you have in your schedule staying current, continuing education, staying current. I'm going to say that again, continuing education, because I find that most claims that are rejected, it's usually just because uh, the, the, the biller or the coder just was using maybe outdated uh, information on a claim. And so, of course, it didn't uh, pass through all those checklists that are um, uh, a part of the process. Healthcare payers include patients, employers, government programs, commercial plans, and others. The codes, once again, they're updated with changes, deletions annually. Having current physical coding references as well as online references is a must. I think it's wise to have both because we know that technology can sometimes disappoint. And if your technology isn't working, if you're having some kind of tech, uh, technical difficulties, as they would say, you want to have the backup. So it's always good to have these uh, uh, these uh, reference manuals available for you in case your technology disappoints you. Lastly, I also think that it's important that you get very familiar with the electronic health record. It's a version of a patient's medical history that is maintained by the provider over time, and it may include all of the uh, key administrative clinical data rel relevant to that person's care under a particular provider. So it includes the demographics, the progress notes, problems, medications, you see the vital signs, past medical history, laboratory data, all of that information that's in a uh, hard copy of a patient's um, chart is now in electronic form. So we know that this uh, is really taking over, so you're going to need to have some familiar familiarity with um, using this type of um, software as well. So again, that said, I'm going to go ahead and end it. At the end of my uh, written notes that go along with this video. I have some possible interview questions that might be helpful for you. I think I have about 10 at the very end. So being prepared when you're sitting down in front of a prospective employer or prospective client, just thinking about some of the questions that uh, may be posed to you during that meeting and being prepared. Again, it's Nina Baysmore, and I'm so glad you were here. I hope that this has been very helpful. Share it with someone who may be looking to get into this field as well, and I'll look forward to your reaching out to me if you'd like a link to the written notes that go with this video. Okay, God bless you.